Spalding, can you tell us a bit about this? Um, there have been hints about this for, for, for quite a while in terms of uh, an, an alliance between China and Russia in regards to what's happening in Ukraine specifically. Now, if we could deal with it one bit at a time, what kind of military assistance could Russia get from China? Well, of course, you know, China's defense contractors are some of the most prolific in the world. So, you know, obviously uh, things like drones, which allow them to uh, understand, you know, what the Ukrainians are doing, anything that uh, that um, uh, that would be useful in terms of surveillance of uh, Ukrainian uh, operations would uh, would be very much valued by the Russians. Also, weapons, um, which includes everything from personal weapons to bombs. Uh, you know, China is the supply chain of the world, and for those countries that purchase from either Russia or China, China is pretty prolific in terms of producing those things that that would be needed by Russia in order to prosecute um, the, the war in Ukraine. And what about uh, the other direction? What would China get in return from Russia? Well, yeah. you know, um, they're building this huge uh, gas pipeline uh, from Russia to China. So it's really about energy. And, and you know, the way uh, Russia, uh, Russia's economy works is really no different than during the Cold War. I mean, they really made money off of energy. And that still is the case. And the thing about uh, being the supply chain for the world in order to run that supply chain and all the factories um, that um, uh, that it requires, it requires energy. So China's big thing is they need resources, raw materials and energy, lots of energy. So it turns out that Russia um, can provide that. So it's really a good symbiotic relationship. Russia needs weapons and, and material. China needs energy. They work together and and actually, they also see the world in the same way. So, you know, when it comes to the international institutions, they can both push on them in different ways uh, to get, you know, essentially what they want, which is the, 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 the dilution or the diminution of demo democratic values everywhere. Um, so that kind of answers my next question, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, Vladimir Putin appears to not care about being rendered a, an international pariah. Does China not care in the same way? They absolutely don't care. In fact, their goal is to undermine the institutions that were created um, after the end of World War II. You know, the, the easiest way to, um, to think about that is, you know, to look at the Atlantic Charter that Winston Churchill and FDR signed uh, before the beginning of World War II. And the idea was to create this international order around the ideas of individual liberty, um, rule of law, free trade. And those are the exact things that both Russia and China want to push against and, um, and undermine and have been, quite, quite frankly, quite successful in doing so. I think what's happened here is that they finally feel like the, um, the West is in such a decline that they no longer have to do it only through kind of the, um, the infiltration and influence that they've been doing in the past, but now they can be much more aggressive in asserting their, um, what they consider to be their own interests uh, using direct military force. Hmm. Um, it's fair to say that China haven't explicitly supported Russia yet. What do you think they're waiting for? <laughs> well, when you think about the way they operate, and um, China is very crafty, so they will never explicitly, you know, come out and say we're supporting Russia. What they'll do, uh, and they'll never do it for North Korea or Iran. They'll do it behind the scenes, and so they will undermine sanctions, just like they've done for North Korea and Iran. They will, um, you know, give aid and comfort, just like they've done for North Korea and Iran. But then they'll say, you know, first of all, uh, each country should be independent and sovereign and we shouldn't, you know, restrict their interests. I mean, they've been very clear that, you know, it's the West's fault that Russia invaded Ukraine, not the other way around. So they're never going to come out and say um, that we support Russia, but they're also never going to come out and condemn Russia. One of the things that she is very concerned about is 
you know, if they were to come out saying condemn Russia, well, then Putin can come out and do the same when they invade Taiwan. So what you're going to see is a behind the scenes assistance. And quite frankly, this is not any different than, you know, the, 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 cold, the first Cold War. Most of the things that, that went on were hidden from view. And a lot of them weren't really known until the Soviet Union collapsed and we had access to archives to see what exactly was going on. There's going to be a lot that, that, that the West is never going to have privy, never going to be privy to until, you know, these things come to an end. There's been a lot of discussion about what China knew about Vladimir Putin's plans um, in regards to Ukraine. Some people were saying, well, you know, wait until the, the, the Beijing um, Olympics were, were over. Um, other people saying, no, that they wouldn't have known the extent of Vladimir Putin's ambitions. What do you think? How much do you think they knew and when? I think Xi Jinping knew. And I, the reason I think he knew is because Putin needed that assurance that um, if he did it, he would have support in the event something went wrong in terms of economic sanctions. I think the uh, Russians expected economic sanctions. I think they're probably surprised by the level of economic sanctions and how much they've bitten into the Russian economy. Um, it's important to note that both Russia and China have already been preparing their economies from um, being cut off uh, from the West. In many ways, this is the goal of the Belt and Road Initiative to tie these authoritarian regimes closer together economically and really in anticipation of this more aggressive military posture that both Russia and China have considered. We've been talking a lot about sanctions, um, especially in the, in the UK. And you said earlier that you you, you said that uh, that China could help um, Russia in terms of kind of getting round sanctions. Can you explain how how they would do that? Well, yeah, they just they'll they'll supply them with the things that they need. Um, you know, for example. Um, most of the nations are saying, hey, we're not going to buy Russian oil. We're not going to buy Russian gas. Well, the Chinese will buy Russian oil and they will buy Russian gas. And more importantly, they will ship them the goods that they need. Russia is not going to be cut off from the, the resources that it needs. Now, is, is it going to get dollars to pay for um, the, the oil and gas? No, but it doesn't need dollars, it can get uh, renminbi from China and then turn that renminbi into the resources they need. You know, people, one of the things that people didn't understand about the Afghanistan war is that the Taliban always had the ability to go into Pakistan and get the resources they need to continue that war into perpetuity. And so when you create this, um, it's almost a safe haven, and that's China to Russia. When you create this safe haven for Russia in China, then this war can go on just as long as China has the resources it needs. And if you've noticed, there's not been a whole lot of effort really to cut off China from the world like uh, Russia has been cut off. So in essence, that's where how Russia is getting it, the things it needs to, to sustain itself in these trying times. So just finally then, I mean, it sounds like this alliance is, is, is pretty solid, but is there anything that you can think of that you can see that would weaken or destabilize this alliance? Well, remember, this was the, um, this was a strategy of Nixon, uh, President Nixon in 1972, when he went in to approach um, uh, Mao about creating a separation from the Soviet Union as a way of weakening the Soviet Union. So in, in right, like right now, I don't see where that is possible, but you know, as time goes forward, you could see that either one side or the other are gonna be played off each other. Um, it just, you know, it, it, it's gonna have to wait for the right circumstances for that to present itself. Right now, we're in the beginning of the second cold war. And so, those opportunities are probably could take decades to manifest themselves. Okay. Uh, General Spalding, thank you very much. Very interesting and, and quite terrifying as well, but thank you for your insights.